guests. Now we have invited Dr. Mohan Anandaji, whose name itself is Krishna's name, Mohan Ji. Dr. Mohan Ji. <laughs> Okay, let me give the yes. phone to him, okay? Yeah, yeah, we invite Dr. Mohan Anandaji, oh, okay. and who needs no introduction. Those who want to know more about Mohan Anandaji, in nowadays, the Google is the easy way to get the introduction. If you just type yourself that Mohan Ananda, it's enough. You know the entire, about the Vishwarupam of Mohan Anandaji. <laughs> Dr. Mohan Anandaji, is today is the, our for Krishna Ashtami, Gokul Ashtami, Sri Jayanti. On this occasion, we really invite the Dr. Mohan Anandaji from Los Angeles to give talk on the choice of the topic. Is actually we have given a his choice, but she said it's about happiness. So now and happiness and success. Yes, Manar. Now the talk will he will start the talk, and those who are in the Tele Bridge, and please listen, and also try to understand the what the topic he was he talked, and those who have got um, some questions at the end of the talk, you can easily ask and get the all the doubts get cleared. Now we invite Dr. Mohananda ji. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Dr. Satyavati. Yes. And uh, uh, I, I just want to uh, just take a minute to uh, mm. kind of explain how I met uh, Dr. Satyavati and how uh, you know we got to know uh, over the you know many years. Uh, you know, of course, we have been living in Los Angeles uh, for a number of years, and uh, mm. uh, we, we go to the Malibu Temple. Uh, periodically, especially my wife goes there more often than I. Uh, then we go once, uh, we, we saw this uh, beautiful lady uh, coming and talking to us and a very, very uh, authentically religious person. And uh, we found out that she's the, a kind of a teacher in Sanskrit. And I am a, you know, I always enjoy Sanskrit even though I didn't have the privilege of uh, learning Sanskrit uh, when I was young. Uh, but I always wanted to learn Sanskrit. And mm -hmm. then, of course, I grew up in a small village uh, in Kerala. Uh, probably nobody would have uh, heard. Uh, it's a small town out of the uh, northern part of Kerala in uh, uh, near Kannur, uh, a small town called Chirgundu. Chirgundu means small hill. And uh, uh, that's where I grew up and I went to High school. We have a very, very uh, beautiful temple in Chirugunna, which is known as Annapurneshwari Temple. Annapurneshwari is obviously the mother, you know, provide food, uh, Parvati, and that is an old temple of over a thousand years old, beautiful temple and walking distance from my house. So, uh, as a young boy, I always go to the the temple as a past time, you know, playing with friends and things like that. So uh, the, the, the temple had, in addition to they provide food to anybody, whoever comes there, that's the, the Annapurneshiri meaning giving food to the to the, those who come. Uh, but in addition to that, they had uh, quite a lot of uh, religious functions. Uh, you know, they have uh, obviously dances, songs, Katakali, various performance periodically. In addition to that, they used to have, uh, you know, scholars. Uh, they come and give lectures uh, who are much, much more knowledgeable than me, obviously, even now. Uh, those days I was very young and very interested, uh, inquisitive. So I used to listen to those lectures. And, uh, and most obviously, most of the lectures uh, were related to Sanskrit, because Sanskrit is the, the, the language in which uh, all our scriptures are written. And as a matter of fact, I learned uh, subsequently, Sanskrit means perfect, perfect language. I think it's uh, probably the, the most uh, perfect language ever uh, invented by people or human beings. But anyway, Sanskrit is... Uh, so I wanted to learn, but I did not have the luxury of learning in schools because there was no science in school. But the, the, in, during the lectures, I started uh, interested in 
in, in of course, just like many, many uh, scriptures are there, but I became more closer to uh, Bhagavad Gita. The real reason is, even though the temple is uh, Annapurneshwari temple, uh, that is Parvati temple, uh, there is a deity next to it, is Krishna. And uh, even though the, the main deity being Devi, but I'm, I was more uh, attracted to the, the other side of Krishna temple, Krishna's side. So I used to visit with him. And slowly but steadily, I became not religiously attracted to him. I was more attracted to him as a friend. As a, as a matter of fact, became a close friend. Uh, in a sense, uh, it's, I don't know why, how it happened, but it did happen. And uh, then, in, as a matter of fact, subsequently, there is another famous temple in um, Kerala called Guruvayu. And Guruvayu is main um, deity, is Krishna. And Guruvayu Krishna is like baby Krishna. And, uh, and there is a history about Guruvayu and all, and I'm not going to touch about it because that's a outside the scope of our uh, current topic. I just want to get into uh, our topic, but I want to give some, some background. So anyway, the Guru Ayur Krishna uh, became my the actual uh, personal kind of uh, God or personal friend. So I always go to Guru Ayur, even though the Krishna in our village, uh, obviously it's very, uh, you know, a good temple. But Guru Ayur has a little bit more attraction to me. And whenever we go from here to India, I make it a point we go to Guru Ayur. Guru Ayur, every trip, whether uh, we don't see other friends or other people, I go to Guru Ayur and uh, kind of have a person with the Krishna. It's just like seeing a close friend. But it's more of a, the conversation between us is probably imaginary. That is, I don't ask for anything or I, that's not the purpose of me going. It's an attraction I developed over the years, and this continues. And obviously, we were supposed to go a few months back. We couldn't because of all this, all the pandemic. But whenever we go, we go to Guru Ayur and spend some time and have a, a darshan with him. And that gives me a lot of uh, enjoyment. So the, anyway, so the, the, the reason I'm coming to the, 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 the relationship with Krishna really was one of the reasons um, I started uh, having this attraction towards Bhagavad Gita. And you probably all know, but I just want to summarize. Bhagavad Gita is really a, a narrative uh, description of a dialogue between uh, Arjuna, uh, the Pandavas prince, and Krishna, the charioter, the driver, uh, about uh, just kind of his concerns, Arjuna's concerns about being in, in war with his relatives. So that's the communication. And of course, as yes, you all know, uh, Bhagavad Gita is part of Mahabharata, which is the epic one of the, the great epics of uh, Hindu literature. And uh, the Bhagavad Gita is about uh, 18 chapters, and it goes through all kind of discussions. And obviously, it's all in, in Sanskrit. And my knowledge of Sanskrit is very, very poor. But uh, I am I'm a student of, obviously, Malayalam. Malayalam is a language which is closer to Sanskrit in many ways. Malayalam is the newest Indian language, so to speak. But Malayalam is a kind of a cross between Tamu, which is totally independent of Sanskrit, and Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is, there are many of the Malayalam words are closer to Sanskrit than even Tamu. So I could some more other make up or understand, and, but of course I was reading the Bhagavad Gita translations either into Malayalam or into English. Uh, reading Sanskrit alone I probably wouldn't really enjoy or appreciate. And I've been a student since I was almost 10. So we are talking about number of years of uh, uh, relationship with Bhagavad Gita, and I probably have read it um, many, many times. But not that I understand everything, but I just want to give you that uh, 
the background and i may come into some discussion about bhagavad gita in this this uh, kind of uh, uh, you know my talk and anyway when, when the opportunity came uh, when i met dr satyavati she was interested in teaching sanskrit i was really thrilled even though my knowledge of sanskrit was very poor so we discussed me and my wife discussed and agreed that we will go and take uh, classes uh, from her and she had a beautiful place in malibu so nothing else to just to go to malibu malibu is one of the most desirable areas nearby so we kind of go there and spend time with her and it is more like uh, uh, going to not a teacher's house it's like uh, you going to your own family member so she would give us food she would, i mean there are more close <laughs> things happening as in teaching but we, she obviously were very good in teaching and then obviously she became a guru and you know always in sanskrit guru means uh, the remover of darkness obviously she was trying to put light on our uh, knowledge in sanskrit and we spent uh, practically uh, uh, at least once a day uh, once a, once a week uh, throughout the time she was in um, los angeles uh, until she obviously left then we stopped at sanskrit the <laughs> kind uh, uh, of courses except we continued for some time and we uh, uh, over the you know kind of distance learning but i i think think it lasted for a long because of many other reasons but that's how we met her and i'm so thankful that the opportunity came and we kind of uh, uh, continued the relationship over the, the many many years now Uh, coming back to today's topic uh i i just want to talk about happiness and happiness obviously means in in hindu religion it actually it came from ananda that's, that's my name to some extent <laughs> ananda is a, is a state of bliss ananda is of course uh, uh we will kind of get to that before that i just want to i also took a course from one of our very close friends and Dr. Satyavati knows uh, Dr. Narayana Swami he is a scientist uh, just like me uh, in structural he is in structural engineering structural mechanics but he is a very learned person in hindu scriptures much 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 more than or anything i know and he is a, also a practitioner of hindu religion in, in a very strict sense and he started giving lectures about uh, uh primarily uh upanishads but also veda of course upanishads are uh, it started at the end of veda vedanta and uh, i i we took this course for four years it's a long time <laughs> which means i i am like a, a a graduate of upanishad class <laughs> maybe a poor graduate but i did uh, learn uh, quite a bit at six course too and he now since subsequently he started even a class in vedas but i didn't have the the luxury of attending except a few classes but not really so veda uh, was uh, but the in the veda class he was more concentrating on uh chanting uh and i'm not that uh, interested in or capable of chanting but my wife goes and she would love to chant and she would do the chanting session i was more interested in the second part of the after the chanting he gives some discussions intellectual discussions i would join there and sometimes we we'll have a conversation and kind of engage in a, in a question and answer type of discussions i enjoyed that so that that was uh, the beginning of actually the upanishads i did not have much knowledge about upanishads however uh, upanishads the concepts were already in bhagavad gita so in the sense even though i did not know upanishad but i am i was uh, kind of aware of some of the the discussions of upanishads so i want to just give a summary of my Uh, understanding of openness before getting into the the main but it's all related 
that's the reason even if i go to vedas upanishads or any any bhagavad gita or any of these things that's where all the the real valuable information is coming from the uh, as you know uh, there are four vedas and vedas obviously starts the veda starts from the root uh, the sanskrit word vid vid means vidya or knowledge that's where the everything starts from so th- uh, these vedas were there many many years ago i don't know exactly when it was uh, it happened to be uh, i i uh, my understanding and you know people knowledgeable people say it's over 10000 years old and the vedas are rigveda yajurveda atharvaveda samaveda so those are the four vedas and most of these vedas my understanding of vedas is not really a, a religious or hindu concept or hindu you know type of uh, discussion it's more ritualistic more uh, looking at the nature and about the knowledge it provides you so that's the, the my understanding of veda but then subsequent to veda the upanishads start it's where i did attend these classes so i can summarize it in a, my understanding of upanishads and upanishads obviously there are i understand there are 108 upanishads uh, but uh, we were touching on just the major 10 upanishads uh, uh, at least in our class we, we didn't get exposed to other except some discussion would come and i kind of uh, uh, you know give a summary of that here the the 10 upanishads are isha kena kata prashna mundaka maundakya taitriniya aitireya chandokya bihiranankya and these um, 10 upanishads are the so called the best or the, the the most preferred upanishads they all say the same thing uh, in a, in a way but there are some differences so basically upanishads meaning uh, sit nearby that means the, the student sits near the teacher uh, that's why how are the upanishads come from so sitting near and sometimes the student will ask questions to the teacher but more often the teacher will ask questions to the student and say that go and find out the answer so it's not he does not give the answer he will give an opportunity for the student to find the answer by analyzing and thinking and coming up and sometimes he comes back and says okay this is what i found out so what do you say then he will say aha uh-huh, that could be but that gives this part of it but then he will ask another related question and you have to go back and search for answer so this is how the pinches uh, developed now I it, it, it going back each of the vinishets I may want to spend like a, a one sentence or half a sentence for each of them so that we can get a little uh, kind of a picture of what the vinishets are each of the vinishets actually came from yajurveda each upanishad has a, a a parent relationship with the veda the veda is the starting point the upanishads is underneath and isha is uh, from yajurveda isha is basically the the underlying theme is it's the theory of atman atman meaning self or uh, yeah that's a word used for uh, saying what is this like self consciousness or self realization self that's the atman and the whole universe is filled with the spirit of god that's the the basic thesis of isha that is theory of atman and the whole universe is filled with the spirit of god uh, of course that's a that's a conclusionary statement and but that's how it happened what it is uh, that's the message uh, uh, it conveyed whereas kena kena comes from samaveda uh, all these benefits as i said come from each veda the kena came from samaveda the uh, kena is really a 
discussion of Brahman. What is Brahman? And uh, basically, uh, it, uh, it says Atman exists, knowledge and spirituality are the goals and intense longing of all creations. That's the, the, the theme of um, Kena Upanishad. Kena says that Atman exists, but knowledge and spirituality are the goals and intense longing of all creations, which means uh, to me, uh, everybody is seeking knowledge and spirituality. That's uh, respectable. That's the, the, the goal. And now, uh, Kata Upanishad, Kata is from Ajurveda again. Kata Upanishad is basic statement is Brahman is O. So this is actually a, an interesting story. A young boy, uh, son of one of the sages, uh, I think his name is Vajasarana, so I'm not that familiar with. This is a young boy. He has a, a his name is uh, Najiketa. He meets uh, the the Lord or the uh, person who manages all that, Yama, and their discussion, this is the Kata Upanishad, that their dis discussion about the nature of man, knowledge, uh, Atman, and Moksha. So he, this young boy goes to Yaman and asks all these questions, and Yaman addresses that conversation is uh, provided in the uh, Kata Upanishad. Uh, now, another Upanishad is Prashna. Prashna comes from Atharva Veda. And here also there is a question and answer between the student and the teacher about uh, Brahman, individual, uh, uh, Atman, uh, meditation, uh, immortality, and in various other spiritual topics. So that's where the, the Prashna Upanishad discusses many of those details. So it's a very, I mean, I certainly would recommend if the, anybody who is interested in learning more about uh, Hindu religious uh, kind of concepts, should go and revisit or go through Upanishads. Of course, the ultimate, my suggestion or my recommendation is just read Bhagavad Gita as many times as possible. That's the that's the, the real where the knowledge would be attained. But if you want to go into one more layer deeper, it's better to go to the the, the roots, which is the Upanishads, and the Upanishads will give some. Many of these concepts are reflected and repeated in in Gita. Gita provides. If you are a student of Gita, in my opinion, that's good enough. That's the probably the best place to get the, the, the real, real uh, essence or the, uh, the, the what you call uh, the divine information. Uh, now, the next two is uh, Mundaka. Mundaka Upanishad is from uh, Veda again. And this is written in the form of mantras. Of course, we have you know, in, 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 there are in, in the Hindu scriptures, there are so many mantras. Every, in fact, most of the, the sayings are all in mantra form and mantras, but this is particularly written in the form of mantras. Uh, and not for, these mantras are not for rituals. Most of the mantras are for rituals, doing certain, you know, services, sermons, and, you know, whatever, the, the, the pujas and and you use mantra here, uh, this is primarily for uh, teaching and meditation, spiritual knowledge, and how to find the path to, to attain a Brahman. That the goal, the goal is, which I will discuss later on, which means its goal is to reach self-realization, to, to reach the final path, to part of, to become part of uh, getting moksha, being 
become part of the universe or the, 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 the greater consciousness or God or whatever the term you want to call it. That's the whole goal. But this is uh, this is giving a teaching in step by step path how to reach Brahman. And the, the next Upanishad is uh, Mandukya. And Mandukya Upanishad is also from uh, Atharva Veda. And here, basically, the Mandukya Upanishad says the universe is Brahman. The Atma exists and is Brahman, which means the self is Brahman. If you can, if you can attain it, if you can find it. So there are uh, discussions here in this Mandukya Upanishad. There are four states of consciousness: wakeful state, uh, state, dream state, deep sleep state, and ekatma, a being one with self or oneness of self. Those are the four uh, states, which are obviously, wake, most of us are in the wakeful state. And we, it's, uh, all of us have dream most of the time. And we also go through deep sleep. But ekatma state is where it is very hard to enter. If you can enter now, then you, you are with yourself, being self. That's almost like, that's the state you reach the realization of self. That's what at least that Upanishad says. Now, the next Upanishad is Tatriya Upanishad, and this comes from Ayurveda. Uh, this is like a mythical students uh, who became kind of birds in order to gain knowledge. This is a Tatriya, it's as a bird. So it's like students becoming birds and to gain knowledge. This is a, a lifetime pursuit of knowledge about Atman and self-knowledge. So the same, I'm repeating almost, same thing from the other opinions, but this is particularly, that's the purpose of this. So you, if, if a student of Upanishad does not need to really learn every, all the 10 or all the 108 Upanishads, that's not necessary. You can take any one of them if you understand in, in, in the depth you need, I think you have attained. Every path is saying how to know Atman, how to attain knowledge, how to reach uh, Brahman. That's the that's the path it's uh, teaching you. I mean, you may be wondering how uh, I'm talking about all these things, but I haven't talked about happiness yet, and the subject is happiness. So I will come there because this is all I, I I'll try to tie these things in some way that happiness. Is, which means Anatta is what reaching Brahman is all about, or how how you uh, reach self-realization. That is the path you are going to achieve. But I just want to give some background about these things, and then we can kind of uh, tie the loose loose. And uh, the next Upanishad is Aitreya Upanishad. Aitireya Upanishad comes from Rigveda. And in this, there is a three philosophical themes. Uh, the first one is uh, man is the creation of Atman. The Atman undergoes threefold birth. Second one. What has the threefold birth? Father, mother, and real birth. The birth, he becomes he or she. The third one is consciousness. Consciousness is the essence of Atman. So Atman meaning self. The self is consciousness. So that's the message that Atreya uh, Upanishad. Chandok Upanishad is the next one. And Chandogya comes from Samaveda. Uh, here, it really talks about the importance of speech, language, song, and chants to man's quest for knowledge and salvation. So he uses speech, language, song, and chants to attain knowledge and reach salvation. And the last tenth of initiative is Bihardya. Viharanyaka Upanishad. This is basically a, a treatise on Atman. 
passage on metaphysics, ethics, yearning for knowledge. So he, he, this, this is more like a, a discussion on Atman. What is Atman? So how it, one obtains knowledge. So that's kind of a, a summary of Upanishads I want to uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, go through. So you have a background of the Hindu scriptures. This kind of gives the, a, a good start to, to go and study more. Now there is an important uh, uh, statement. It may be very interesting. Uh, there are four Mahavakyas that called Mahavakya means great saying. Uh, the first one is Pranyanam Brahma. Insight is Brahman. It comes from Aitreya uh, Upanishad coming from Rig Veda. So that's something always you can remember. And it's very, very uh, you know, people kind of, you can take any one of them and just remember that that's good enough. Insight is Brahman, Pranyanam Brahma. Uh, next one is from Mandukya Upanishad. This is from Atharveda. That's I am Atma Brahma. This self is Brahman. So it's saying every self is, this self is Brahman. The next one is Tattvam Asi, which means it comes from Chandokya Upanishad, Samaveta. That essence is you. This is what is uh, written in many temples. In fact, this is what is written in one of the very famous temples in, in Kerala. Uh, you go to uh, Ayappa Temple in Shabarimala. It says it's written there, Tattvam Asi. This is it. That's what, you know, uh, this essence is, yes, you. Uh, then the, the next very important comes from Brihadranyaka, which the Upanishad from Yajurveda. Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. I am Brahman. That's the, that, that's the one thing, if you know that, and if you can reach there, that's good enough. That's the end of uh, uh, the whole Hindu scriptures kind of summarized into one phrase, Aham Brahmasmi. So I just want to give that as a as a, a kind of introduction for Upanishads. Now, uh, the, 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 let me kind of start now on happiness. Happiness is in a in a if you go to any English dictionary, it would say happiness that feeling that comes over when you know life is good. That's kind of a, a Western way of uh, identifying or defining what it is. So another way of in discussion, you can say it's characterized by the end of desire and suffering. Once you, once you are uh, in uh, uh, reach happiness, there is no uh, need to worry about any, any sufferings if you reach the, the state of happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there is uh, Bhagavad Gita in chapter 5, there is a verse uh, which is kind of touches on it to some extent. Uh, this is the, I, I, I can just read it, I'm not good in uh, Sanskrit slogas, but uh, this is Saknodi Haiva Ya Odum Prak Sarida Vimokshanadi Kamakrotra Bhavam Vegam Samyukta Sasukhi Maraha. And I'm sure uh, <laughs> Dr. Satyavadi is <laughs> an expert in these things. She can actually uh, say it more correctly. Pa perfect, um, perfect, Mohanji. And her pronunciation yes. is perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And what the mm. translation is, mm. he who is able to resist the impulse of desire mm. and anger 
even here before bequest the body he is a yogi he is a happy man so that's the 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 kind of a simple translation of that verse but it is more to it means you basically you you are you have to get rid of desire meaning need to acquire more see the people some or other the, the society not just western society yeah, it's true in india true in any part of the world uh, the happiness is when you get more uh, i think at least that's the definition or when you when you have more material things i mean if you have uh, one car you want to get another car or you want to get a faster car or that's the, that's the way uh, the happiness really is practiced but that's not what the, the real happiness is because if you there are a lot of very extremely wealthy people uh, with all the material things <laughs> extremely unhappy about the truth i know quite a few people like that as a matter of fact because i do deal with a lot of uh, wealthy people in circumstances but i don't consider them really happy uh, so that's a you have to get rid of that desire and also you have to get rid of anger since people also has not just the desire to get more things they are you know very angry with others i mean some or other it's a, you know it's a, they, they see and uh, i mean the anger could be because of jealousy could be because of some other uh, the, the, the problems with the relationship but you just have to get rid of that so even the the, the anger is more the opposite to happiness but uh, here you have to kind of eliminate the existence of anger and it is just to do why you are you have the body means why you are alive of course after you are not there anymore that doesn't exist so it's that that's the person when it reaches he really becomes a yogi that then he is the happy man that's what chapter 5 verse 23 bhagavad gita says now now let's examine um in psychology that is uh, you know of course we are talking about science i'm a scientist i believe in science science asks the right questions in psychology uh it refers to subjective well-being outcome of pursuit of pleasure over pain a sense of distance from the problem this is all how psychologists define happiness that is you don't have uh, any pain uh, you you you're away from problems and also pressure is associated with so if you are you attain pleasure whatever the form of pleasure you get different pleasure eating uh, good food or listening to a good music or different type of pleasures and that is associated from a psychological that's associated with happiness pleasure is more than sensation or thought and according to neuroscience it is a brain activity so brain really reacts to certain things the brain is the, the of course in human being all senses are going through the brain the brain is providing that that status or feeling or thought whatever that is and it's a, it's a it's a neuroscientific activity uh, there is a lot of research goes on and continues to comprehend the functional neuroanatomy of happiness what is the what is the result of happiness how does happiness happen and what is the outcome of happiness and how does that change chemically within the human body and all these things are being studied scientists continue to study and i don't think it's uh, they know everything about it uh, uh, and subjective well being is highly corre- correlated to personality traits so each individual have a different say i would be happy for simple things or i know for example the the in streets of uh, villages in in places where i grew up or places like that there are kids running around uh with absolute joy in their face and they look happy compared to the uh, somebody in america with all kind of uh, uh, 
facilities and uh, you know support and the material uh, things uh, may not show that kind of a happiness in the face. So, it's a, so there are certain personal traits sort of like that there. So it's individually uh, certain things make uh, people happy under certain circumstances, and some other, some other people, some other type of conditions make them happy. So there is a subjective uh, uh, correlation. And also, the happiness is related to emotions. Emotions mean transient emotion, synonymous with joy. Joy, of course, we are using English language these words. Joy, some, some joy is, to some extent, happiness. But each word has specific intent. That's the reason there are different words. Uh, so there is a, a, a emotion which comes out of joy providing a status of happiness. And another thing is an experience of fulfillment and accomplishment. And generally, happiness is, is uh, when you achieve something. Or if you're like a, you, you, you want to climb a, a small mountain or a big mountain, when you reach the end, you feel happy. So it's an, you fulfill. Or somebody takes an exam and you're waiting for the result, and the result comes, you, you, know, you pass the exam, you feel happy. So that's a, happiness is some kind of a accomplishment or fulfillment, or you get a letter from a good friend or some relative saying, okay, they are doing well, everything is fine, so that makes you happy. happy. Happiness is, a, is kind of a, a, a fulfillment. And uh, and also identity development, the, the achieving certain potential. So if you reach certain potential, you're like you uh, learning a language, like you're learning Sanskrit. And you feel like you have learned that language, you feel extremely happy. So happiness is, is, a, is a achieving certain accomplishments and certain potential. And uh, happiness is also, you know, from in addition to pleasure, it's def defined from a satisfaction, a satisfaction of certain uh, conditions. Then you feel, um, uh, I mean, the Western civilization certainly believes a little differently in the sense happiness is attempt to, attempting to maximize pleasure and pursue self-interest. So stay define it as more maximizing pressure and, and your own self-interest. That's the, the happiness. Uh, so the happiness consists of life satisfaction, presence of positive mood, and absence of negative mood. So you feel like you are happy when everything goes your way and nothing goes wrong. That's the more of a thinking in in the Western of the outward world. And another way to happiness is defined is happiness is uh, enhanced by people acting in accordance with their most deeply held values. So, so it has a relationship with your values. That is, you value something, and that reflects on happiness. That, for example, uh, this personal experiences and quality of life as an indication of happiness. So, which is very, very, very uh, uh, related to uh, uh, you know, happiness is a sign of a state of affairs. But now we can relate the happiness with success. So sometimes, uh, which comes first? Uh, that's the question to be asked. Happiness creates success or success creates happiness? And sometimes even success is not very well defined because success is also to some extent subjective. It's a state of mind. In Western definition, 
the, the fact of getting or achieving wealth, respect, or fame, that's defined as success. And so you have to have a lot of wealth, or you are a big person, you're a leader, or everybody gives you respect, or you're a movie actor, an actress, or you become famous, that Success is a peace of mind, which is a direct result of sat self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. So that is a one other definition. Success is kind of your own peace of mind when you achieve the best what you are pers pursuing for. You know, of course, success, you, 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 if you pass a certain exams, you feel you, you are successful. Or you go to an interview, you okay, you are looking for a job, you got, get a job offer, you will be succeeded or in success. That's a, um, but there is also a definition, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. That's a very kind of different way of defining Success. So it's you know, in fact, people in every circumstances, you know, there is an opportunity to fail, but you should make success out of failure. So you, you don't lose enthusiasm or you don't become depressed and lose your continued pursuit of that success. In, in turn, the pursuit of happiness. So you continue to do, and that is a success. Happiness is just like subjective. Success is judged externally. That is, happiness is more internally. You're happy when you feel like you are happy. Success is not that you feel success. You want others to think you are successful. That's the kind of very subtle difference between happiness and success. Generally, happiness leads to success. Happiness, success link exists because Success makes people happy. So there is that, that which comes first is not really that clear, but happy people are more successful, which means which comes first, happiness or success? Uh, happiness is related to life satisfaction, appreciation of life, and, and moments of pleasure. That's happiness. Happiness provides a, a lot of Competitive edge. People change uh, if you are happy from, uh, and you can make more possibilities out of if you are happy. You, your your uh, opportunities uh, are more if you are a happy person. And it's built upward momentum. So success does not just create happiness. But certainly happiness can create success. So it builds momentum to uh, create success if you are happy. Now, coming to happiness again, we talked about Hinduism. It's a little subtle and different. See, the word ananda, which uh, we talked about, means bliss or happiness. Eternal bliss. Um, Vedanta school teaches us, Ananda is the state of sublime delight. In Gita, Ananda as happiness uh, derived by good thoughts and good deeds. That's what Gita tells. Also, it says happiness is achieved through surrendering one's ego to the desire to the divine. Uh, uh, the, you, you, most people have ego, and if you have ego, you are seldom happy. In fact, if you have e ego, you are also uh, not successful. So you have to get rid of ego. That's, this is what Gita says, and that that is the path to happiness. And obviously, Bhagavad Gita says, attainment of happiness is through yoga. 
and, uh, and we'll get to that. It's my favorite subject in the sense. Uh, there are three yogas which uh, uh, Gita teaches us. Bhakti yoga, karma yoga, and jnana yoga. To attain, so it's a, this type of happiness is that uh, it's, it's actually attaining ananda or bliss. This is where the, the, the Gita takes you. Bhakti yoga, you know, most of you probably know, but I just want to summarize again. Bhakti yoga is synonymous to intimate understanding of oneness and harmony of the eternal individual with the divine. Consists of concentrating one's mind, emotions, and senses to the divine. This Bhakti Yoga means doing rituals. My wife is a, a good candidate. I mean, she does puja every day. She, you know, she uh, does uh, go to the temple as much as possible. I mean, she, she, she is an, a good example of a person doing Bhakti Yoga. And many people do it. That's an easy one. Because you are basically doing rituals. You, 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 you surrendering to the God or surrendering to the divine and uh, just putting everything in his feet and you do your thing. So completely surrender. That's the, the Bhakti Yoga. And Bhakti Yoga as devotees, loving devotion to a personal God for the, as a path for spirituality. And it is a divine love the mysticism, divine love mysticism, synonymous for an intimate understanding of oneness and harmony of the eternal individual with the divine and all creatures and a constant delight. So it's a, uh, it, it's, it's almost like you are blindly following the, the divinity. You don't need to think about it. You just do uh, the, the, uh, your rituals on a, on a, that will attain you the, the realization uh, and then you are fully realized which means you're fully happy that's the, the, the attainment of moksha but it is easy to say it's extremely difficult to do so coming back to karma yoga this is something I, I personally uh, kind of and Dr. Satyavati knows uh, we, in many occasions we had conversations and I'm more uh, in, the, in the karma yoga type of person even though I want to be the jnana yoga, the, the more difficult part. But karma yoga is the, the, the really, it's a yoga of action, which means the, the, the Gita tells right action is form of prayer. You do the right thing. I mean, of course, I don't, nobody knows what is the right thing. Is That is the, the most difficult part. Karma yoga is a path of unselfish action. He acts according to dharma without being attached to the fruits or personal consequences. That is the, the most, and in my personal life, I have honestly tried to do this every time I can which is maybe a, an exaggerated statement, but that is a, at least that is the intent. It is one, one problem. There is a major problem. That is, I do the right things without worrying about the consequences or the selfish interest, but I don't know whether I am really doing the right thing. I don't know what is the right thing. That's the, the most difficult part. But I do, within my knowledge, within my understanding, the right thing. And that is where it says dharmic duties, righteousness, or, I mean, dharma is a, a very, very interesting word in science, Sanskrit language. And it is not clearly that easily translated into any other language. So all kind of, so under certain circumstances, like uh, Krishna tells Arjuna, it is dharmic to go and kill your teacher. It is dharmic to go and kill your cousin. Or it is dharmic. So it may look very, very uh, odd. What is dharma? One has to do at the right circumstances, at the right place, under the right
right conditions without knowing what are all the right things. But if you do that, and if you don't expect personal benefit or the fruits or the consequences, then it's perfect. But if you are looking for most uh, uh, American society, uh, especially in the U.S., everybody does thing with what is known as uh, return on the investment. And if I, I do something, uh, what do I get back? That's the American way of uh, most people. Because that's how it's trained. That is, you do things to maximize the return. But Bhagavad Gita says, you do, don't look at the return. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. That's the path you should do. And whatever the results, that will happen anyway. doesn't matter. You are not in charge of that. You have no right to. So that's the path. And I personally, this this, this one uh, words, which I even last time when I talked to something with you, I brought it up. That's the words I really uh, enjoy in Bhagavad Gita. Of course, the 700 slogans or verses in Bhagavad Gita, each one is, is extremely valuable and good. But this one is my favorite, and I, I just wanted to... Uh, 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 because I think that's a, that's a, a, a very very appropriate under the circumstances, and I want to kind of uh, let me see where it is. I, I wrote it someplace <laughs> because this is this is something which. Uh, uh, Oh, here, yes, that's why I couldn't see that. Uh, the, 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 this is a chapter 2, uh, verse 47. And of course, Dr. Uh, Sasuji knows very, very well. No, no, please uh, continue. Karmanye vadi karaste ma phale shukatachana ma karma phale hedu pur ma de samgo sato karmani. It's a, it's a, the, Sloka I go by. My my daily activity. <laughs> Anything I do, I think about it and I act on it. I mean, I, this is something not uh, just a saying. It is, a, it, is a, it is a real. And I encourage everybody to kind of at least to think about it, meditate on it, and, uh, and maybe even do it. This is say, seek to perform your duty, but lay not claim to its fruits. Be you not the producer of the fruits of your action, neither shall you lean toward inaction. Which means you, you have to do things at the right time, in a dharmic way, and do it. Don't don't uh, uh, think about the outcome, and just do it. But as yes, I said earlier, uh, it's a, it's often very difficult to know what is the right thing, and. Uh, this is, I do it in my business decisions. I mean, I have been CEO of, and also various uh, in, in board members and various type of very official capacity in many occasions throughout my life. And every time when you have to make a decision or any action, uh, I kind of, it, it comes to me. Uh, this is how I should go. Do the right thing, forget the outcome. I mean, it's, of course, if you are going to go to war, you have to do, and you have to win the war. I mean, that's a, if you do the right thing, you will win the war. That's the, my theory. And that's what Gita tells me. And I, I just want to make sure that that message is, if you keep doing that, that gives me happiness. So it is attaining happiness. So I am, I'm not saying I'm the, the best and perfectionist, but I have tried to follow. But in many occasions, I've done the wrong thing because I did not know what was the right thing. So obviously, it, the things didn't go well. But at least one should, uh, in the best judgment, do the right thing. That's the message I, I got from, um, you know, that particular uh, uh, that verse. So I, I wanted to uh, kind of repeat. It's so almost one hour. But uh, before I conclude, I want to talk about a little bit on Jnana Yoga. This is my favorite yoga. In the sense, this is uh, because I'm, uh, uh, you know, practicing or 
scientist because uh, a, a, a scientist always asks questions and try to learn more. Yana yoga is a path of knowledge and path of self-realization. It's a uh, spiritual practice, but you can you have to analyze you the, it it uh, the pursues knowledge with questions such as who am I, what am I. Uh, the meditation reflects and uh, it reaches liberating insights on the nature of oneself, Atman, and relations to Brahman. So this this is something very analytical. Uh, you have to really, uh, you know, think. It's more uh, thinking, analyzing, and finding. Uh, it's just like the, the Vinayasha I said. The teacher tells the student, "Okay, this is the question. Just go and find it. You have to go and find yourself." So that's the Nana Yoga part. You have to, in your own mind, concentrating in your mind, and that's the the, the Nana Yoga part. And um, in fact, there is a, in the chapter four, uh, verse 38, 38 the, the Gita says, uh, I'll just, there is, Nahitnanena satrasyam pavitrimiha vidyate tatsvayam yoga sansitya kalena tamasivintada. Truly, there is nothing here as pure as knowledge. Time, he who is perfected in yoga finds that his own Atman. So that's what Gita tells. This is you have to find yourself. That is through the Jnana Yoga. Uh, I think I've kind of covered the general uh, area of happiness or reaching or uh, attaining uh, 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 happiness, meaning Ananda or bliss. And uh, I think I, I may want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, close this talk with uh, the famous Gayatri Mantra because that's where everything kind of ends. So, so we meditate on the glory of the Creator who has created the universe, who is worthy of worship, who is the embodiment of knowledge and light, who is the remover of sin. Ignorance. This is, uh, thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Mohan Anandaji. <laughs> thank you for taking the time. Really, the it is really meeting the meeting scientist and spirituality. I can say that way because we are meeting the scientist, the NASA scientist, Dr. Mohan Anandaji. And the one who gave the one very informative and interesting, the topic, very elaborate explanations you have given and, and deep, the, the depth in all those things, I really feel, I feel so proud of Dr. Mohan Anandaji. For the thank you. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Satyavati. It is a pleasure to participate in your this uh, platform. Uh, I, I enjoy and I, I continue to enjoy this type of conversation. And I, 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 I'm, of course, I'm, I'm a continuing student, so I'm trying to learn. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I appreciate yeah. there are people who know much, much more than me. But it is, it's, a, it's always, uh, in, in fact, I you always say, whenever I meet somebody, I learn something new. So it's mm -hmm. an opportunity to learn more. Yes. And also because this happened, because whenever I discuss with Dr. Mohan Anandaji, the topics are so always so interesting. And also I said, okay, let everyone be used, I mean, benefited by these talks. So that's why it made the Lord Krishna, Yogyam Yogyena Yojayet, they say in Sanskrit. So the person who is really worth, so let everyone be benefited with that knowledge. So that was the purpose. The Krishna himself got this one, that, and you gave in the beginning the beautiful analysis of the, the details about the, he is a kena kata prasna munda mandu kyatitiri aitareyam cha chandu gyam brhadaranyakam dasa 
in that way the all the ten Upanishads so vivid explanation you gave and the contents of those things will we appreciate that knowledge will be useful for many of our and the three pravachana goshi and also the three in the right now dr vallabhaneni uh, satyanarayan rao garu professor physics professor and who is in this particular uh, listener and mainly they are the, the one who likes there are about 136000 followers of this sri pravachana goshi at one stroke the this your talk reached to more than 136000 people at once from different countries they received because of this multi stream broadcasting and from twitter many professors and also from our sri pravachana goshti dr ranganatha from ragna ranganath vethala he was a radiologist by profession doctor and also our dr murthy from detroit he was they are all um, like uh, anuradha murthy and many other dr ram mohan rao garu and or they were he was a scientist and many or related with this uh, sri pravachana goshi uh, they are, and dr sri devi who got uh, uh, from our goshi all the time she gives songs and and those now i request anyone has any because all the time i'm talking no not good so anyone has any questions you please let uh, here please anyone yes mona yeah please uh, mona mona anda ji it it was a very um, informative talk i really enjoyed listening to the talk thank you for uh, th- thank you for um, putting uh, coming here and and, and uh, blessing the ghost with your talk so i, I really appreciate and thank you for that and the the uh, there are lots of different uh, uh, topics that you have touched upon uh, but the core essence is about happiness and success that you said that um, success uh, if you have happiness it will eventually lead to success uh, but going after success may not uh, give you happiness so that's like a, i think the crux of the whole uh, uh, you know the talk that you gave so that's uh, that's one of the things that I, i i that's what i i could imbibe from the whole that, that is exactly right that is you yes, yes. that the success is more uh, subjective to some extent but also it, it it relates to a third party thinking you are success but uh, happiness is the path to success if you are happy you will reach success does not automatically gives you uh, happiness that's the, the your, your conclusion are exactly the what i was hoping to get across right so that that's i think it's it's, it's been it's been very clear and and very informative um i also had the, like um so you also mentioned you also touched upon mantra and meditation and um, you said about spiritual and not religious and stuff so i had i had this this um uh, this thing that was going on the this kind kind of a uh, di- i would say um it's kind of pitched against each other like the spiritual and religious uh, thing i would i would want your insights into it um visavi saying people say whether it is it good to have a spiritual um aspect or a religious um in a bent of mind so there are two ways now yeah, spiritual question of analysis i mean i i may just touch on it i i, I don't want to claim to be an expert in that area but i my approach to religious aspects versus spiritual aspects are kind of different religious is more uh, somebody you know follow the like especially in, in not in hindu religion per se like if you take religious meaning any religion christianity or islam or any other religion there is always you follow some rules or some of their you know uh, some steps where spirituality is in me within you in you meaning in your heart or in your brain in yourself that's a spiritual it's more morals and your own value system but religious is more created by some organized group so that's the that's the way i look at it that the difference 
I don't know whether that is the right approach. That's my perception of the difference between religious approach versus spiritual approach. Oh, okay. Because the, the way I'm, because there are different schools of thoughts. When you say, you have touched upon few, but there are, there are so many different schools of thoughts um, uh, that have been on. Uh, I, I The way I look at it is, spiritual is more like an abstract way of looking at it and religious is more concrete. So you have to actually do some work and uh, you have to bind, uh, like for instance, bhakti yoga and jnana yoga. Jnana yoga is more like abstract for me. The way I, I look at it, it is more like an abstract way. Whereas bhakti is you, it's like a very palpable and concrete way where you have at least some steps to do and which will, which, 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 which essentially might lead to something, but from a spiritual and jnana, I feel it's more an abstract. And as you rightly pointed out, it is a much more harder approach um, uh, to take for like people I agree with to that go with that an abstract. To compare, abstract. Uh, just uh, uh, you know, bhakti yoga and jnana yoga. Uh, there's the different. All participants are unmuted. <laughs> Uh, it's very well laid out. At least you, the path is much more clear. Whereas Jnana Yoga, uh, you, you, the thinking is very subjective and it's very difficult. And sometimes it's so analytical, it varies from individual to individual. That is an extremely correct uh, statement. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Now, uh, from the... Uh, yeah, Sri Sri wanted to ask the says few lines first. Yeah, Sri. yeah. On the on the Dr. Mohanan. Yeah. Uh, namaste. On the same uh, on the same lines. Anything on um, uh, what we can do to increase uh, the spiritual awareness uh, incrementally? You know, uh, on a day to day basis, right? Uh, that we will do as part of a big part of our day is obviously work and what we do so anything while doing that what we can do from your perspective to increase spiritual awareness while continuing to do whatever we do all throughout the day i think it's a very i mean I, that's where i kind of tried to suggest this uh, uh karma yoga concepts whatever you do do it spiritually meaning in a right way I, I, that's the approach I am taking, but you don't know what is the right way, or I don't know what is the right way. But that's that message. I don't know whether that is being taught to the young people or the you know generally to the public, because the, the, here whenever we do something, we always have a tendency to maximize the return, to to return on the investment. That's the concept we are trained or people teach. Look. You do something, how do you maximize it? I think that could be changed. If if that could be changed, the, the result would be much better. That's just my humble opinion. I don't know whether that is, it is not scientifically proven, but I believe in Kida's statement that karma yoga, you do the right thing whenever you have to do. Yes, sir, yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, I mean, a similar concept is, you know, I mean, when we translate it, right, one of the things, core things we are taught in most of the management things is uh, focus on the input variables, right? Where if you're designing any system, software, business, business unit, any performance, you say focus on the input variables. Don't focus on the output variables. For example, input variables for losing weight would be the actions you control. Output variable would be actual weight loss. And uh, most of the systems we are taught is basically try to focus on the metrics that you control, which are input variables, which I think is kind of, at least from the way I interpret it is, in a way parallel to what I heard, which is basically the karma yoga is, we continue to do what our duty is, which is what we, which is the input, karmanya vadika raste, which is the input variable. Uh, which is the output variables and then kind of control that and uh, yeah I mean it is very thought provoking I think when we can ap apply this with a big part of our day is basically the karma that we do and applying this spirituality to it actually allows overall to be more effective I thought. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I agree. That's exactly right. I mean, I personally, I have felt that way, and I have tried to do. But I mean, I, I mean, can't say that we always do the right thing. Right. But if uh, the best as you can put together, and I think that concept is not really well understood in the Western world. But there are, in fact, I have met a lot of very uh, extremely smart people and capable people. They they do what you just said, exactly. But at the same time, but the general principle is how do you maximize the return? That is the, the prevailing uh, theory, and I think that needs to be at least, uh, if not completely eliminated, that has to be changed uh, to some extent because you give more importance to the your part of the job, not the outcome part of the okay. job. Yes, I just want to just share basically when when we in that same following that has allowed us uh, that that thought process allowed us to not give up early and have a little bit more long term thought process because otherwise frequently you are focused mostly on a return and then it might be actually that you know that return or something is around the corner but people tend to give up. Uh, and not be you know have the persistence because they're so focused on what the return or the output variable is as opposed to if you know that you know you are doing the right things then you don't focus on the return but continue to do but like you said it's obviously a very difficult thing whether it's a business system or anything to understand what are the what is the right thing and what are the right input variables to pick otherwise you could choose uh, you know so yeah, I think we draw a lot of right. Yeah, you can tweak it later on. Hopefully, mm -hmm. if you you know the, the people make mistakes, but that's a right. common thing. I mean, you know, that's a, every decision point is you are making a decision, but all decisions may not be correct. Right. But you learn from it, and the next time the opportunity comes, you tweak it and do the right thing. So yeah, every time I, that's a, that's the approach I I profess or I yes. encourage. That uh, it, it, it's nothing is guaranteed that you would do the right thing, but you will make an, an attempt to do the best uh, the way you can instead of looking at how it would uh, create the outcome and maximize it. So it's a different approach. Uh, I mean, yes. many people do the way Gita says, but many do something else, and, and obviously that's not the right, that, that's supposed to be the path I, I would follow. I really appreciate the essence of Bhagavad Gita, the Karmanye Vajika Raste. That was the principle you, that what Dr. Mohan Arandaji had, and same Srinivas also all the time say at home. So that's why they, want, they are so eager to discuss these things with you. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Dr. Uh, Mohan Arandaji, you have little time. Now, uh, uh, Ram <laughs> Reddy Krishna Rao Gavru from India. He is in, he is on the line. And Reddy Krishna Rao Gavru, Jai Sri Manarana. So, he, yes. uh, Dr. Mohan Anandaji is here. He had the happiness and success. Would you like to share something? Yeah. Reddy Krishna Rao Gavru? Yeah, can can you hear? No, I think wait, wait. This line is actually. Oh wait, okay. Jai Sri Narayana. Jai Sri Narayana. Jai Sri Narayana. Jai Sri Narayana. Ah, Dr. Mohan. Ah, ah. Yeah, no, no, Dr. Mohan Ananda ji just now had gave a elaborate talk. Very, very interesting. And it was very informative, and with all analysis, and everyone, it will be useful. So you have, you want to add something, anything, or you want to ask something about the, the happiness and success? That was the topic which he discussed, which you heard just now. How, how Bhagavad Gita huh? helps us in maintaining the happiness. That is that is very important, no? How Bhagavad Gita, mm. like the, the Lord's saying, how it helps us in life. Like Mohanji. 
కర్మ యోగ హౌ టు ప్రాక్టీస్ నిష్కామ కర్మ డాక్టర్ మోహన్ ఆనందజీ కెన్ యూ హియర్ హిస్ వర్డ్స్ i i i thought that his question was how does bhagavad gita helps yes. to attain happiness right dr reddy krishna reddy krishna rao swami tell him the, your question ask how how does hmm. karma yoga nishkama karma yoga how to practice nishkama karma yoga because if you do some work you are always extract some profit out of it that is human tendency but is it possible to practice nishkam karma yoga uh um, maybe i didn't quite understand hmm. karma yoga according to bhagavad gita says you make the right decision or right contact or right act without looking any return or without thinking about consequences without Uh, any selfish motivation so you do it your duty dharmically according to dharma that's what karma yoga says that's my understanding but that one says lord says that <coughs> ananya sintayanto mam ejana paryupasate tesham nityavyuktanam yoga kshemam ahamya this shloka definitely explains ananya sintayanto mam you continuously remember me i shall take care of you how does nishkama karma or any karma comes in this version of lord so, so he got it dr mohan ji i didn't hear it very clearly oh, you can hear it okay can you can you kind of explain Yeah, he is he is asking for the nishkama karma the nishkama karma means without expecting anything how it can be possible yeah, if, if you expect something mm. then it is not the dharmic karma but but mm. at the same time lord says ananya sintayanto mam ejana padyupasate tesham nityavyuktanam yogakshemam ahamya yes yes how, how does how how do you explain this shloka no no that that is not the they see the, the, the krishna rao swami you ask about the happiness and success that is the topic today it is not the total bhagavad gita we are not discussing today the, the yeah the he the karmanye vadhikaraste is the main principle of bhagavad gita that was the main discussion మా ఫలేషు కదాచన దట్ హీ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఆల్రెడీ డాక్టర్ మోహనానంద జీ హీ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఇన్ ఎ బ్యూటిఫుల్ వే దట్ వాట్ శ్రీనివాస్ ఆల్సో ఆస్క్ ఈవెన్ సింహాలు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ సో అబౌట్ హ్యాపీనెస్ అండ్ సక్సెస్ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్ ఎస్ ఎస్ కరెక్ట్ he explained in a very elaborate way in i really appreciate dr mohanand ji has taken lot i mean uh, that it is almost like a, a research paper <laughs> like in a conference a beautiful way in a systematic because he is a scientist he dr mohanand ji he basically is a nasa scientist and apart from all other things and he he is a, a, a successful person in life i that what and so success and li- happiness he discussed in a it is like a, i i i feel myself it is like a direction to all this discussion will be useful for those who are in the line of the success and those who are in the searching for happiness this talk with this topic will definitely be helpful and it is like a guiding line to many 
like our Simhalu asked the questions. So, and also many of them nowadays, they say, I am not a ritualist, I am a spiritualist. This is a normal way of saying. See, see, rituals are different and where when you do anything with your mind, that the, that is the spiritual thing. When you do with uh, everything we you perform with the body, we always call that as the ritual. So when you do everything with mind, and when you think about uh, thing in mind, that is the spiritualism. And and also, Dr. Mohanandaji gave the the Mahavakyas so beautiful way he explained. And also, each and every Upanishad of all the ten Upanishads, the purport and the gist of all the ten Upanishads, like in a nutshell, he gave those discussions. I really appreciate Dr. Mohanji, and it is really a worth discussion which we had on Krishna's uh, Krishna Jayanti that we call Sri Jayanti Day because this weekend is the Krishna Ashtami weekend. So that's why Mohan Ananda himself is the name of Krishna. That is it. And Ananda in itself is a word, the name of Krishna, Nirati Seya Anandam. That is the name of the, the Krishna means. So Dr. Mohanaji, I really appreciate and many more uh, such discussions, we should really come forward. And I appreciate and many thanks to from the uh, Sri Pravachana Goshti. It owes a lot to such great scholars. Yes, Indarada. Thank you very, very much. I really enjoyed the, the you know, the, your whole effort putting mm-hmm. people together and yes. making, you know, these type of uh, conferences. It's really, really, uh, I mean, it's a hard work, yes. but I, I I think it's worth it. It's, a, it's the right thing to do. Yes. Thanks a lot. And if I can yes, be a part yes. of it in any way, I will continue to be uh, and joined. Today, many more to come. And also because of some other in- event, ha- incident happened. So some are really got... Uh, and and the next next discussion we will have next second Sunday Saturday the all second Saturdays we will have a discussion that we really appreciate different different topics we discuss with uh, Dr Mohan Anandaji and Dr Raji Dr Raji thank you so much for your wonderful song at the beginning thank you and your song itself is thank really. See, so everyone really appreciate that song, the music. And it started with music. Life itself is a music. And so Dr. Mohanji's valuable discussion we had, I appreciate. And these are all, and children also appreciate that really, they are the, I mean, the youth is the one which, the one who participated. And many were hesitating to ask. They were sending the messages, but they were hesitating to ask. I said, okay, next time when you have the time, you can ask him. So, most of you. And I really appreciate Dr. Mohanji and your grandchildren. You. Yeah, Thanks your grandchildren were sent by, uh, I, I don't know, I, I heard about uh, in the, uh, what we call uh, from new from there own jet uh, that is in the uh, for New York uh, uh, grandchildren were sent that means yes, uh, they're right. doing well. Thanks, yeah, I know I know <laughs> I got from the that's why I tell you, I did not introduce Dr. Mohananandaji because who knows I mean who needs no introduction at all because those who know about Google just I mean click Dr. Mohan Ananda people will get. And they have personal jet where, where they could send the children, I mean, grandchildren. And this was, uh, these are all the things. And also the 450,000 million worth, that is Dr. Mohananda Ji. So million dollars, it is, not, it is life's, life's achievements really make everyone to be a successful person. And apart from all the day, Happiness is the one which I always, it is a, it is a happiness lies within. That is the, I believe in that. And our, um, other things nearly never make us very happy. Only the things which makes you happy is the things which lies within. So thank you, Mohanji. And once again, I thank you, Dr. Raji also. 
and Dr. Mohan Ji, again we met, and Dr. Radhi Krishna Rao Swami, he by profession Radhi Krishna Rao Garu is an engineer, he was a retired person, he is about 80, how many, 86, no? 87, Dr. Mohan Ji. Congratulations. We always appreciate his 70s, but he is 87. God is great. He takes care of everybody. And if you listen his voice, Dr. Krishna Raghur, one shrok in Sadhavandi, one pothana machildi, see the voice he has, tremendous, beautiful voice he had. One shloka he recites, you listen, Mohanji. Just. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. I know that. कस्तूरी तिलकम ललाट फलके वक्षस्तले कुस्तुबम नासाग्रे नवमुक्तिकम करतले वेदुम करे कंकरम सर्व Eighty-seven years, and see the throat. It has really the beautiful and um, the pronunciation, clear pronunciation, and the breath. He could have the control over the breath, and he could see the. the. And that's really the entire Bhagavatam. He sings in this way. That's what we appreciate. Even Bhagavad Gita, slokas, and all the things he has. That God has given that really beautiful. And sometimes I feel, even in 70s, I sometimes feel, oh, the throat is not, oh, today throat is not helping me. But this is, doctor, I mean, Riddhi Krishna Ravagaru, uh, really uh, a blessed person in this way. And Dr. Mohanji, Dr. Raji also, uh, she gave the beautiful song today, Raji. I have no words to explain. Thank you. So, uh, and also we, we 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 request you come frequently and please come to come songs and also the Dr. Mohanji and we do discuss more more topics and more useful for the society for the benefit of the mankind. So this is the way how we can do our services in the way like uh, all the time only the prayers. No, apart from the prayers, we do need these. Uh, the analysis of those in a beautiful way and the way you have so elaborate discussion we had today, I appreciate for your effort, Dr. Mohanji. Yeah, thank you very much. I would continue to join and listen to a similar talk sure. you when you have. Sure, it's and also we will continue. The, yeah, <laughs> and also you said, you remember the Taittiriya Upanishad? 
द तैतीर उपनिषद द ब्यूटी इज द तितिरी बर्ड्स एक्चुअली द तितिरी बर्ड्स इज अ सिम्बॉलिक वे टू से द स्टूडेंट्स द क्वालिटीज ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स द स्पैरो इज द तितिरी इन संस्कृत मीन स्पैरो द बर्ड स्पैरो हैज द क्वालिटी ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियस एंड एट द सेम टाइम वेरी अटेंटिव A student must be very attentive and very industrious too. That is the qualities of the the Thaitiri Upanishad. When Yagni Valka gave these things, then the with the Veda Vidya, this must be like that. That was the the meaning of the Thaitiri Upanishad. The qualities of the birds. I'm really appreciate, right. yeah, and many more things we do discuss, and we do start our Sanskrit classes also, like Bhagavad Gita, whatever the thing. And tomorrow we will have the, the still the weekend celebrations of Krishna Ashtami. Tomorrow we will have Narayaniyam, the Parayana, with our devotees, those who are uh, am I ready to do? And if the Radhi can also join with us. the narayaniyam last time we had one song yes. one song on narayaniyam you remember dr raji yes. yes yeah yes so one shloka you have to sing and then rest other shlokas we only just just recite we recite only okay. we cannot sing like you that is the difference <laughs> <laughs> no problem yes. we, but please. time so same time same 7 o'clock okay me 7 7 okay with you i think it will be 5 yes, o'clock for five you o'clock it for will 5 o'clock uh, yes. pacific time okay yes yes okay thank you so much and we appreciate thank everyone radhi krishna rao garu we appreciate you right in the 7 o'clock in morning it is in india it is 7 o'clock and you really had the patience to listen this uh, total and also those who have who one need not to feel that they miss the lecture it is already recorded and it is broadcasting and so you, in the youtube if you go to uh, sri pravachana goshti or even the sri pravachana sri pravachana goshti or even facebook or facebook page and facebook page we always have the likes and also the followers 136000 so far and it will be more and twitter also same name sri pravachana goshti that is srinivasa ramanuja international s r i the srinivasa ramanuja oh, international oh. pravachana goshti that okay now again we can we conclude now with the uh, प्रेयर ओम भारद्वाज कुलामृतो दिविधो आचार्य पीठे सितु श्रीनिवास राजाचार्य गुरो श्रीनिवास राजाचार्य गुरो आप्तागमा तम तत्दाचन धारक मनु मणि ध्यानोल्लस मानस चार्य अस्मदु अहम भजे पार्थसारदी गीताचार्य अस्मदु गुर अहम भजे श्रीमारायणाचार्य अस्मदु अहम भजे सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कषि दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 जय श्रीमारायण जय श्रीमारायण जय श्री